There is breaking news on immigration right now, perhaps with a twist on it that we've never really experienced or heard about before. The Washington Post has it. It's just been posted. Quoting now from the lead, White House officials have tried to pressure U.S. immigration authorities to release detainees onto the streets of sanctuary cities to retaliate against President Trump's political adversaries, according to uh, Department of Homeland Security officials in email messages reviewed by the Washington Post, end quote. Rachel Bade shares the uh, byline on this. She joins us now by phone. Uh, Rachel, uh, I haven't even had time to read this full article. Can you just walk us through your reporting, what this, this plan was? Uh, I, I guess it was by from the White House to Homeland Security? Happy to do it, Anderson. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy story. Um, basically, we found out that Stephen Miller, who's one of the top uh, uh, White House hardliners on immigration, very close to the president, um, they leaned on ICE to consider this proposal where they would be moving undocumented immigrants they had captured at the border to sanctuary cities uh, or the districts of adversaries like Democrats. And the one that was mentioned in particular was Nancy Pelosi, uh, who's the Speaker of the House. This came twice. It came right after the election uh, at a time when the caravan, remember the caravan that the president always talked about before the 2018 election, they had just reached the border. Um, so it, the, the talk started percolating around that time. And, you know, ICE was really alarmed by this. Um, they, they seemed to ignore it at first and then sort of put it on the back burner. But it came up again right after the president decided to reopen the government following the 35-day shutdown in January. Uh, the president basically gave lawmakers three weeks to come up with this deal to fund the border. Uh, and one of the key issues they were debating was detention beds. Uh, Democrats wanted fewer detention beds for ICE. And so this came back, this idea was pushed again by the White House um, on ICE in February, right in the midst of these talks where Democrats were saying they didn't want to give these detention bed numbers to Republicans into the Trump administration. So ultimately, um, according to our reporting and the folks we spoke with, um, including uh, two whistleblowers who actually came to Congress with their concerns, um, this never went anywhere because ultimately Democrats relented on the detention bed issue. Uh, obviously, they didn't give the president the wall funding he wanted, but on detention beds, they relented. And also, a, a several legal advisors in ICE found that there was no legal justification for doing this. And so, you know, they ultimately pushed back on the White House um, and said no. So uh, I, I just want to back up on something you said. Uh, they mentioned in particular Nancy Pelosi. So they were actually suggesting putting people who had just been arrested from the southern border and driving them to San Francisco uh, or, I mean, uh, to, to Nancy Pelosi's district to drop them off? That's exactly right, busing them. Um, there were two sort of ideas that we heard from folks familiar with these plans. One of them was to take people right from the border um, who were trying to cross and, and move them to sanctuary cities, including San Francisco, um, where Pelosi obviously is, is uh, that's her district as speaker. Uh, the other idea was to move people who were already in detention and ICE uh, to these districts. So there's sort of two different plans considered. Uh, both of them shot down. Um, ICE officials not only had legal concerns with this, but ICE, um, from a policy standpoint, they have always argued that we can't move migrants from one area to another because we're not appropriated to do that. We don't have the money to do that. Congress never gave us that authority. We can only take people out of the country. And so oftentimes they use that excuse when it came to trying to move immigrants from one shelter to another. Uh, but this went in direct contradiction to that in a, as a policy. Uh, so both legally and, you know, from a policy standpoint, they just said this doesn't make any sense. And obviously they were very concerned about the the optics of this, too. In fact, one DHS official was said that this would be, you know, PR catastrophe to look like you were going after your political foes, releasing undocumented immigrants to try to punish people. Um, and remember, the president has harped on sanctuary cities before. He said that they, you know, they're dangerous areas and, uh, you know, it's like a wild west. Well, it looks like they were trying to perpetuate that by releasing people that in their mind thought would create some sort of havoc on their Democratic opponents. Right. I mean, it, it, it's uh, it's almost as if they you're not actually thinking about that these are actually human beings. You are actually moving and then, uh, I guess, dumping uh, someplace far away after a very long bus trip. 
Um, it, it, just to be clear, your reporting is that this, this was seen as retaliation, um, that this is essentially to cause problems for the president's political enemies? That's exactly right, 100%. Um, you know, one person who I spoke with uh, in, the, in, in DHS said that this would be sort of like teaching Democrats a lesson, uh, teaching people who, you know, oversee sanctuary cities or Democrats who wanted to curb funding for law enforcement at the border or um, that this would basically be them saying this is what it's like to not have enforcement. And to have all this stuff happening on your streets. And, and, and have you actually seen emails to this effect, or is this based on the whistle? You have. You've actually seen the emails. We have. We've seen emails from the White House um, to ICE officials asking them about this and what their options could be. Um, and, you know, the first one we saw was from November, like I said, right after the election, um, leading up to the election, the president talked a lot about the caravan. And, you know, a lot of Republicans were concerned about his rhetoric on this, thinking that they would lose their majority because he went too far on taking this hardline immigration policy. Well, it seems like that lesson never sank in um, because this was considered right around that time, right around the time that the migrants were the caravan, as he called them, were getting to border. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was considered. Can, can you say, I don't, have you published those emails? or can And if not, can you say who they were from in the White House and who they were sent to? Um, yeah, we, I mean, we are sort of reporting this out. <laughs> as soon as I have more information, I will definitely uh, put that out there. But um, to be clear, we did have people point fingers at Stephen Miller, um, who, as you know, is one of the most hardline uh, immigration policy folks in the White House, very close with the president. The president has uh, basically said he wants Stephen Miller to be in charge of immigration right now, um, and especially right now at a time when we're seeing a lot of these top officials in the Homeland Security Department being ousted or pushed out because the president doesn't think they take a hard enough line, we have heard from whistleblowers and from people inside DHS um, that he was a big driver of this. Now, he's not on one of the initial emails um, that we first we first received from, from November, However, from the folks we had talked to, it was very clear where this policy was coming from. I mean, if you just th think about this for a moment, I mean, the idea that the, uh, they would be, uh, take people from the border, in, which is one of the options, put them on a bus. I don't know how long the drive would be from the border to Nancy Pelosi's district in San Francisco. But, uh, I mean, if somebody died along the way... Uh, in a, one of those buses or got sick and then died, the administration would be responsible for, for that, uh, all for a political purpose. I mean, it's it, it just the, the actual logistics of it uh, could lead to many kinds of unintended consequences. And that was actually something that one of the ICE officials brought back when they, were, when they wrote back, um, and that was a concern about what happens in an emergency situation like this. Um, you know, we're seeing right now, Congress has a lot of questions about what happened to those children that died in custody. Um, and, of course, if something were to happen to these migrants as they're moving from place to place, Congress would be all over that. Uh, of course, Congress is going to be all over this regardless, even though it didn't happen. I mean, I, you know, I reached out to Pelosi's office to get a statement on this, and, you know, her spokesperson said this was another example of sort of, you know, uh, hardline policies that Democrats have long found disgusting, um, and 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 you know I think Democrats are going to be investigating this. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bunch of them weigh in over the next 24 hours. Um, but this notion of using migrants and trying to release them to create chaos on a political adversary—it's right. just—it's. It's absolutely wild, and unlike anything I've seen before. Rachel Bade, uh, it's extraordinary uh, reporting. Uh, it's, uh, it's on the Washington Post site right now. You're also a CNN political analyst, we should point out. Thanks uh, very much.